As I sit here quietly in this space, easily and naturally, without any effort at all, I am aware aware of what I am seeing through my eyes, hearing through my ears, feeling through the nerves in the skin of my body. And as I experience these things, thoughts are created, feelings. My inner state is often a result of what have I, I am experiencing through my senses. A reaction to. Is it possible to rather than be reactive to create my experience. To position myself in such a way that my experience is not relative to what is going on around me. but is rather based on a deep core or essence of self that colors my mind, my thoughts emerge and my feelings. to choose and actively create my experiences rather than react. Self-mastery. The power to choose, to create, instead of react. And the first step is to be aware not of what is going on out there but of who I am in here, inside. That being that is separate from the body. That being that 
that is responsible for the body and the actions performed through the body. I am that being. I am not this body. I will continue to exist without the body, but the body cannot exist without me. This is one very basic power I have. To give life to this body by simply being present in it. But the quality of that life is very much connected to how I see, how I know, how I understand and experience myself, the being. And in silence, with knowledge, I can discover that. And with practice, act from that awareness of myself. Om Shanti and welcome. I'd rather not be so far away from you, but I need to sit here for the camera. <laughs> so welcome to this first session of Spirituality in Motion, the Art of Self-Mastery. And my name is Tanya, and uh, thank you for coming. And let's see what we can discover. So, maybe a little bit about my background and how in these three sessions we will explore what is basically the underpinning of any activity here at L'Emergence, which is this practice of Raj Yoga. And, or if you will, app uh, uh, using spirituality and applying spirituality to our lives in order to experience the benefit of that with the belief that we feel that that is where we can truly benefit ourselves and others in a very sustainable way. And so my background is um, really, I think, a lifelong fascination with movement. I started moving at a young age <laughs> from the day I was born, <laughs> maybe even before. But no, in fact, um, my life involved dance from a very young age and very athletic in school, a variety of sports, and that eventually led to moving into a serious dance career and uh, performing mainly in theater. 
and and then of course as many dancers experienced the injury <laughs> and so um, getting involved in a variety of disciplines to address that and eventually ending up um, first practicing and then teaching something called Pilates and uh, eventually I got certified in Pilates and began to teach but it was more the idea that at some point especially after the injury there was a recognition that something had to change in the way I was using my body even after a what seemed like a lifetime at the time I was I guess in my mid-twenties at the time um, what seemed like a very long time and having amassed what I felt was quite a lot of experience in that field of movement um, I had to realize that there was something I needed to understand that there was something fundamental that wasn't happening properly because I ended up having chronic issues and not even of the injury but afterwards the injury perhaps just brought them to the surface and so I was introduced to various kinds of disciplines that opened to my opened my eyes to a completely different way of using my body and what it did is something that then would serve me well I think when I first began this spiritual path it invited me to forget everything I knew and to simply try to see what was actually there what actually is the truth about what is ideal for the body we're having a fun time <laughs> with the experience outside I hope you enjoyed the meditation commentary because it's true um, that's going on out there <laughs> and perhaps it is better to move away from it um, but we have a very powerful inside it's interesting the noise is very strong are we as strong internally I'd like to think so. We can have a lot of noise going on internally too. But yes. It's like concentrating on the You can concentrate on the inner self mm. while the outer is, is moving and you can hear it. You can hear what goes on inside of yourself. Mm. It's yeah. So it's definitely about where I focus but that's exactly what we're going to explore but you know getting back to um, what happened as I began to really perceive a very different way of doing something I'd done my whole life is ultimately and this is of course after even teaching for several years I began to realize that there are things that we believe <laughs> that we've sort of taken on board and this was in the way I taught and how generally movement and exercises to strengthen the body are approached, understanding about that. And then when I really looked at what was going on, it was actually a very different, sometimes even the completely opposite of what I was teaching. That, and not, not only in that, but what is at the very foundation of what will allow the body to be most powerful and functional. This is what I began to explore. Not just, okay, you do these exercises, you get these muscles strong, and, you know, and then you're on your way. Especially, let's say, a muscle that's been injured, strengthen that muscle and off you go. It doesn't work that way, because nothing happens in isolation. You know, if you have an injury, if something's happened, there's compensation, the body's not ideal anyway <laughs> so you know there's all these different factors that you're dealing with and trying to move towards some kind of optimal if you will functionality but as I began to look deeper and deeper and my meditation practice at this time was very much helping me in this in the sense that it was allowing me to if you will let go of a lot of beliefs and ideas and being able to see beyond that even let's say it's a very accepted practice 
very powerful like in the in the field of movement this is what you do this is how it works this is what you're supposed to to uh, accomplish and then you're actually looking and seeing no that's not what the body needs and so I'll give you an example so often we feel um, that to have good posture we need to pull the shoulders back yes we pull the shoulders back and we can look very upright but we're actually creating a series of other problems in the back and it's actually not a natural position and so it won't be sustainable and you know we were having a little bit of discussion before and I know for myself um, I was getting very frustrated even as a teacher because what the exercises we were doing was not translating into functional movement. They'd be great lying down on the ground, they'd stand up, start walking, and it would all fall apart. And so it wasn't useful. They'd feel good for a while, it would, be, it would alleviate perhaps discomfort, but then as they began to move and to perform functional movement, it was as if they'd done nothing. And, you know, we can make a lot of effort in our spiritual practice. And, or even without a spiritual practice, I mean, I think everyone tries to be their best, tries to behave themselves and to act appropriately. And, you know, there's this desire to be a good person. But there seems to be often all of these things working against us. There are influences. Um, we have taken on, if you will, even programming or habits we have buttons that get pushed and without even wanting to we react how do you override that now what I found as I began to learn more and understand more of the body is that how I walk needs to change the way I'm walking is actually going to um, perpetuate a condition or a problem that I have I need to change the way I walk. Do you know that changing the way you walk is probably about as hard as changing your personality and nature? Because it's so ingrained, it's so a part of how I feel I should be in my body. We do it automatically, and when we try and shift it, we feel awkward, and that almost we don't know how to walk anymore. And so but because it was so important I had to train myself and I was able to do it I no longer walk the way I used to if I even get pulled there because some of the underlying conditions that support me walking that way are still there so a certain way my leg is oriented a shortness in one leg they're still there but what allowed me to become successful in changing the way I walk was Initially, it was just a lot of practice. But eventually, as I began to understand the deeper levels of what allows one to have sustainable, if you will, um, power in the body, and apply those, it became much easier to support these kinds of really fundamental changes. And um, just let me finish this one thought. This is what we're going to be exploring in these three sessions because what it comes down to is first of all awareness. I need to be aware of what is happening. I need to be aware of where I want to go to. But that's kind of maybe when we're talking physically. Spiritually speaking, what is it I need to be aware of? Because there's power in the awareness that I hold. Not just being aware of something, but being aware of sustaining a sense or a position and that brings us to the second aspect we're going to explore which is positioning and alignment for the body alignment is everything you can strengthen your muscles all you want but if your alignment isn't there those strong muscles will, might actually work against you and cause harm and pain so I could get really, really strong, but if I'm like this all the time and I go to do something, I could blow up my back <laughs> with those very muscles. <laughs> the third thing is breath. So, as I sometimes say to my clients, 
what's the most important, the fundamental movement that without that movement, no other movement is possible? <laughs> if there's no breath, there, ain't, there isn't going to be any other movement. And often a big question is, well, how do I breathe? Sometimes even in a spiritual practice, is there a way that you need to breathe to support? Often I reply, perhaps a bit tongue-in-cheek, yes, breathing, do breathe. Breathing is good. Keep breathing. But beyond that, you know, the body has been designed a certain way. For example, it's been designed with ribs, a rib cage. It isn't just one big solid bone for a few reasons. A big mass of bone to protect those vital organs would be very heavy. <laughs> and so it's not very, you know, functional. It's not practical to have something that heavy, even though it might provide more protection. But also, because of the lungs inside, they need expansion. They need something that moves. Interestingly, because of our culture of sitting, because of the stress and how we tend to transfer that stress or transmit it to our bodies, our ribs aren't moving much anymore. Shall we do a little check-in? <laughs> so as you're sitting there, and you're listening, it's very good, thank you. So if you use the power, because each of these things is a power. Awareness is a power. It's an energy, and what I focus that awareness on, I give life to. Yeah? And I can change things based on becoming aware and shifting from that. Shifting perhaps something that then allows things to move more smoothly or the opposite. So it's a very powerful awareness. It's a great power. Without it, actually, life would be very difficult. Yeah, you, imagine you're not aware. You have no awareness of where you are. I mean, there are people out there functioning without the awareness that comes being aware of what I'm receiving through the sense organs and how that allows me then to move and to respond and to, to do certain things, to do everything, really. And yes, we can adapt. Someone can lose, let's say, their sight and adapt in other ways. But that awareness is, is key. Alignment is a power. Aligning in a certain way makes my body powerful. Aligning in another way makes my body very weak. You know, very, very simple. Aligning internally, how I position myself internally can make me powerful or weak. Position myself relative to what's going on, relative to something I'm remembering from my past, how I position myself. Because that's what alignment is, is something relative to something else. So my rib cage relative to my pelvis, my head relative to my ribs. How I position those things can determine whether it'll be power or whether it'll be weakness. And then breath, power of life. I know it's quite obviously a power that is subtle, as subtle as air. It can be so quiet, barely anything going on, and there's life. You know, so that's a very great power as well. And so how can we harness these powers, spiritually speaking, as spiritual beings, to live with greater quality? and purpose and meaning. And so I know you had a question. I don't know if anything in what I said perhaps answered it, but is that question still there? Yeah, because my, my question was the uh, alignment of the body mm. uh, and the alignment of the mind. Mm. Because uh, when you do the meditation inside of you, mm. you automatically your body. Okay, so the question that's being asked is how can meditation and how I will say, I'll put it in these words, how I position myself internally could it help my body. And that's one of the things I'd like to explore this evening. Because actually what we're going to look at in this first session is playing a little bit with those three things to start to uh, move closer to tapping into an understanding and experiencing the being. First of all, getting that accurate, who I am, the consciousness, the being, and how can I position myself so that there is more breath, more life. And life, giving life, the act of giving life, one could say, 
is an expression of love. So, you know, those qualities, for example, uh, we often talk about the qualities that are meaningful and the qualities that actually are within us quite naturally. But whether we can access them or not is another matter. Peace, love, happiness. There are others, but let's focus on those three. And actually, let's add power into that. But in a way, it's sort of the power to be peaceful, <laughs> the power to be loving, the power to be happy. Now, one could say, but you know, how do I know those things aren't there? Or am I just trying to emerge those things? I've had people come to me and say, I have no abdominals. <laughs> now I'm thinking, well, you walked in here, so you must have a few, because otherwise your body could not function. But what happens is those, the potential, the capacity, the power is there, but we're not able to access it because the positioning isn't right. So what that looks like practically is I have someone do an exercise and they find it extremely difficult. I do some things to help them get their body into a more ideal alignment and they go to do the exercise and sometimes they'll even ask me, is that it? Am I doing it? Because they no longer feel any effort. They no longer feel that struggle. Because now the muscles are working appropriately based on the fact that the alignment is there, that power of their alignment gives them access to those capacities that were always there in their body. And it's the same thing for the being. We have these capacities, but we're often not able to access them because the positioning isn't right. The, the sense of self is not where it should be. Now, one of the first things we learn in Raj Yoga is that I'm not this body. I'm not actually physical, but I'm a spiritual being. I'm energy. Now, those are words, and that's information. But they go in. They are plugging in. They are, if you will, they're being received by the soul, <laughs> whether or not it knows it's one. <laughs> and they're having an impact. But often that's not enough. And what I really liked about Raj Yoga was it didn't just tell me things about myself but it gave me very specific details. So I could tell someone all about their muscles. Do you think that would allow them, give them the ability to use them properly? I'll tell you right now, no. Actually, they probably will fall asleep, <laughs> you know, because it won't be meaningful. But if I give them specific things to do that I know are going to move their body into the right positioning, those muscles will then start to work automatically. And that's what should happen. Wouldn't it be great if a situation happens that normally would push a button, but instead it doesn't? It actually invokes a quality. It invokes perhaps peace or love or compassion or understanding instead of reaction. And this has certainly been the experience now, if I'm finding, and this is another experience, if I'm finding that initially I can feel a bit of reactivity coming up, what I would equate that to is let's say someone starts to do an exercise and they start to say they're lying on their back, they have their knees bent, and they start to pick their feet up off the ground. Do you have a sense of what that looks like? So lying on your back, knees bent, and they start to lift their feet in the air and suddenly they can feel their back something happening would they think oh no I left my abdominals at home or oh my old injuries coming back or might they think I'm not properly aligned let me fix that and then try it again and so the challenge of lifting the feet actually revealed that the alignment wasn't there and they were able to make the adaptation because they've practiced and they've learned it and then no problem. So the challenge is there. I can start to feel the irritation coming up. That should be a shift signal. My positioning is wrong. 
that's why I'm becoming irritated. Not because this person is irritating, <laughs> or I always get irritated when this happens, but my positioning is wrong. I need to realign internally. I need to get into the right position. And so one of the first things that we, are, we learn about the spirit, the being, the soul, is that the being sits here in the center of the forehead. And that can seem sort of like, okay, that's nice. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but what's interesting is if I actually take the time to place my awareness here and sustain it here, it does something. Shall we experiment? Now, it's not always so easy, and this is what I found, is... Um, we have things that are kind of, can be obstacles or can create challenge to doing the thing that would actually make things a lot easier. I don't know if that makes sense. But for example, let's go back to what I was talking about, the ideal alignment for the body. Now, we could have all sorts of ideas like, okay, my shoulders should be here, my head should be here, this, and I can create a very mechanical sense of what looks like pretty good alignment. But I'm kind of stiff and it's taking a lot of energy, and it's stifling my breathing, and it's really not very pleasant. So am I going to sustain that? Probably not. Yes. Can we maybe come back to that? Because it's sort of a bit off off target for the moment, but maybe as we go along, that might answer the question. Because quite frankly, we need it probably a lot more when we're in action at this point, and that's kind of what we're going to focus on. But if it doesn't come up, we'll get back there. So um, now I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> It'll come back to me, though. So um, right, for the body, the ideal alignment actually has everything to do on how free my ribcage is. Would that have occurred to you? That if my ribcage isn't actually capable of opening, I'm not going to be able to align my body properly. It's an interesting idea. That when my ribs open a little bit like an umbrella opening, because of the relationship that the ribs have with the spine, through the bones, and with all these structures in my torso, my shoulder blades, my hips, my neck, my head, all these tissues are connecting into the ribs. That when the ribs do that expansion and pulls or tugs on those tissues, it invites all these structures to shift in relationship to themselves into an ideal alignment where the breath improves, the core muscles engage to support the lower back, the hip sockets are more open, the shoulder blades are more supported, my arms are going to then function better at the socket, the head can position itself on the spine, that simply by the ribs being tight and closed, which can happen from stress, illness, trauma, all sorts of things, <laughs> or some kind of pathology, an illness, a condition, everything kind of falls apart. Now normally we would not think of opening or expanding the ribcage to align the body. Would that be your go-to to align? Probably not. Because usually we think about the spine, yeah, and where my shoulders are. <laughs> so when the ribs are open and one little spot at the lower back where the sacrum meets the pelvis, when that is properly positioned so many things come together. So that positioning, if I can learn, if I can free up the ribcage, alignment happens. But what happens when there's that tension, when there's been trauma, when we've got such a habit of holding ourselves here? Yeah, I've been driving in a snowstorm, really bad weather, and it's like scary as anything else. and. As I check in, my awareness suddenly becomes aware. I am slowly tightening a screw right here. I open the screw. But in answer to your question a lot earlier on, 
even more powerful than the knowledge of knowing how to align my body and what can actually override some of those pre-existing conditions or conditions relative to a situation is consciousness. So yes, if my consciousness becomes free and powerful and pop properly positioned, it can have an effect on the body in that it can release the tensions and allow the body to become more comfortable and more functional. Because tension is the enemy for the body. And of course, tension in the mind is the enemy for the being. So let's do a little bit of an experiment and position the being. Now, you may have heard that the meditation we practice here is open-eyed. We practice open-eyed meditation because we'd like it to be something practical that you can t then take out with you and do anywhere, anytime. And most of the time as we're going through our day, closing our eyes is not an option. It's okay. We can just, we can do it au naturel. <laughs> so no lighting change, no. Um, because, quite frankly, we don't get that when we're stuck in traffic or when someone is interesting in front of us. <laughs> we don't get to have a lighting change or soft music come on. So we'll do it as it is. So... I am going to invite you to close your eyes though because I'd like to do a little bit of an experiment. One of the reasons people do close their eyes is because it's probably one of the easiest ways to go inwards. Yeah, If you close your eyes, you're immediately inside. You will experience that you're inside your body. You're inside your body and from that place of being inside, you can sort of do a little bit of a tour, you can be aware of your feet, your legs. You can sort of move your awareness around from inside the body. And you may even find that with your eyes closed, and certainly my clients often tell me this, I can be more aware of my body. I can concentrate it on it better when my eyes are closed. And then I can even bring my awareness right up into my head, and I can bring it to right behind my eyes, as if I'm standing behind my eyes or positioned behind my eyes. And I'm also aware of the center of the forehead. So now I'd like you to open your eyes. And I don't know if your eyes were closed, because mine were. So maybe I should keep mine open so I can check up on you. <laughs> but with your eyes closed, were you able to kind of feel that you're inside? Yeah, you automatically, it's quite natural. You close off the outside world, at least from a visual perspective, and you're inside. And you may have even felt more connectedness to the body, an increased awareness of your body. Would that be fair to say? Yeah? And could you move your awareness up so that you were behind your eyes? You had a sense of those, and not just the physical eyes, because they're kind of hard to feel, but that sort of energy of where vision happens. Would that be fair to say? Can we try that again? So I might keep my eyes open, but um, might be interesting for the camera. Okay, I'll close them too. And I'll trust that you're closing yours as well. So if I open my eyes and I see yours open, oh, I don't know. So close the eyes. <laughs> close the eyes. Eyes closed. Good. So again, wherever your awareness is, bring it up gently. Take your time. Everything, do it lightly. Do it. Take your time. Take the time needed. And then just bring it so that you're behind your eyes. And you're also aware of the center of your forehead, which is kind of a little bit above the eyes. Maybe between the eyebrows or just above. Now, in that position, you're aware of the body around you. You're aware of the eyes. But the sense of self can be a little vague. And in fact, this is not the position when your eyes are closed and you're behind the eyes and aware of the forehead of where you will have that self-mastery. It's as if you are standing or positioned behind the seat you need to be in to be the master. And so what I want you to do now is very gently start to open your eyes, but keep the sense of where you were behind them. But now it's as if the windows have opened and you are looking out through those eyes. 
and you're sitting in the center of the forehead and you're the one seeing the observer seeing through the eyes you're centered you're in that position of power and from here you can actually have a sense of this body that you are sitting in, your vehicle that you are animating and the energy that you are generating that is coming out through the eyes so the eyes would now be open you're the one seeing through them and that energy is also going down and coloring the breath the breath moving the rib cage and the more I can stay seated on my seat where I am the master where I have power where I'm centered where I'm properly positioned relative to the body I can start to the energy the quality of energy I'm generating will change personally what I experience is a sense of great stability the quality of that energy is very kind I would even say loving very respectful there's power in it but it's a very gentle power very precise and it's a power and an energy that frees I can actually relax my body but yet give it that energy and lift it creates a feeling of royalty very naturally because you positioned yourself where you the soul are actually sitting your awareness is now aligned with the truth I am the being here for me when I first began this practice I found this extraordinary I wasn't having to try and sort of wrap my head around anything too esoteric I just had to sit here patiently and see begin to see myself through the experience that that generated how it shifted how I felt how I animated and what's interesting is how it then shifts how I experience what's happening around me because my relative too has changed because I have changed fundamentally simply by aligning with this fundamental truth of myself that I am a soul not this body and I sit here such a powerful thing and such a simple thing and it would be so easy to overlook it because there's a lot of other knowledge on this path but if I don't get this what does the rest matter <laughs> I need to exist properly and powerfully yes Mm. sometimes you can but you know just be aware you're not necessarily experiencing you you're experiencing your forehead <laughs> right and it can be because perhaps I'm putting too much one way often because there's a technique and what I love about again the relative of the body to the soul and soul to the body is the more I began to understand about the subtlety of the soul when I do this positioning I need to do it with the same lightness and gentleness as the subtle nature that I fundamentally am yeah 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 it can be that you just well it's also your attention is there and where our attention goes energy flows so it could be even just 
the fact that the energy is, is focusing there a bit. But from there, of course, it's what I generate and how that then goes into, first and foremost, the quality of the breath. And usually what I find is that the breath becomes an experience of something very loving and empowering I'm doing for the body and liberating. So when I talked about freeing the ribs, and this is quite interesting, I can do this sometimes, especially I'll, I'll use this, I'll use meditation. I won't necessarily talk about what, but I'll just have them, invite them to position their attention here, knowing that the impact that that has, the centering element and the power of that and the alignment to encourage a release of tension that is so rock hard in their body that there's really not much I can do to get them to release it otherwise. Because usually the tension is there. Do you know why? They're holding it there. But it's become so normalized and so habituated. They do not have any feeling that they're holding it. But the person, the person is sustaining it there based on a lifetime. For example, I had a client who I have a client, and um, because of the job this person has, they developed a posture of such to create a sense of authority. But the impact was it was shutting down their body and the functionality of that body. And to let that tension go after years of sustaining that in the body and it becoming the norm. I can't just say, relax your ribs. <laughs> That's not going to work. Maybe some massage. But it's almost like, you know, massaging it and then, well, that was nice. Oh, back to work, <laughs> you know. <laughs> The default setting now has become tension. But this was so powerful. And it's quite extraordinary now to see, you know, I wish I had before and after pictures I don't, but to see a body that's malleable from this block that it was for so long. And that shift can happen so quickly because of the shift in position. What I obviously want to be able to develop is the ability to get here quickly, stay here. The moment I get off that seat, I'm no longer the master. I'm no longer aligned. And what can happen is I can lose myself in what's going on. I can be very influenced by what's going on and react. And it can seem like a very simplistic thing, and there's obviously more to it than just that. But we have two more sessions in which to explore those things. Because what I'd like to do in the next two sessions is look at why is it difficult? What stops me? What pulls me out of alignment? And then in the third session, what is that sort of thing that I need to do that's part of this practice to start to move me away from being on my seat, being off my seat, being aligned, being unaligned. I can now align my body pretty easily. I can do it on the go. I can do it, you know, quickly, I effortlessly, even without thinking about it. What I will say is this enhances my capacity to align my body greatly because of the release of tension and the feeling of that mastery and power it gives. So you're driving your car. Yeah, this is my car. Where do I want to be sitting when I'm driving the car? Yeah. If I'm sitting anywhere else and I have to drive that car, how do you think I'm going to experience that? <laughs> Will I be a little stressed? <laughs> Will it be a very scary and unpleasant experience? Yeah, probably be what we often think of as a driving nightmare. Yeah, have you ever had those? I have, where I'm in a car, but I'm not dri sitting where I'm supposed to be, and I'm supposed to be driving the car. Yeah, you, it doesn't work to drive the car from the passenger seat, from the back seat, from the trunk, sitting on top, running along beside. 
None of those positions work. And it's the same for me in this body. There's one position that allows me to operate with more mastery, royalty, power, and those qualities, peace, love, and joy, or contentment. Because as soon as I'm positioned here, in the same way as I said when I align my body, suddenly I have access to the core, the corset. I have a natural corset. Oh my, who knew? You know, that's going to stabilize me, that's going to protect my back as I do certain things. And not only do I have it, but I'm aligning myself in such a way that that core and those capacities are dynamic, meaning they adjust to what the demand is. If I do it artificially, I cannot ensure that. So if I'm just trying to express cert a certain nature, just trying, which we can do, and certainly I have done, um, because it's not coming from the reality and the alignment and this truth of me, the soul seated here, it may work, it may not, I may sustain it, I may not, but there's no guarantee. And there may be repercussions. You know, there's sometimes you want to do something to help someone and sometimes we're not even sure what to do, but they want us to do that, so we do it and it goes sideways and they get mad at us and it's just a big mess. <laughs> But behind it all was, but I had the best of intentions. I just wanted to help them. But it's like we're trying to do everything while not being seen properly to be able to see clearly what should be done by generating a quality of energy that will actually empower the other person, that will protect me, <laughs> that will keep me accurate in what I choose to do, and that will make me feel comfortable within the whole situation. Yeah, all of these things allow me to make the best choices. But, you know, if I'm not, again, positioned, I don't have access to those capacities to intuit or to feel what, you know, whether I should go with this or not. I'm easily influenced. Yeah, I'm pulled. And so, you know, again, coming back to the body, what's very interesting is how subtle these adjustments are to align are. So I'm sitting here now, and I'm going to just do something. Okay, right now, how does it look? Does it look pretty good? Yeah? I know he's like, it's a trick question. <laughs> what do you think in the case? Is there anybody online? <laughs> oh, okay. What do you think? <laughs> pretty good? Am I okay? No. <laughs> So I'm trying to kind of, I'm looking pretty good. Yeah, we do a lot of looking good, don't we? <laughs> we can do a lot of looking good. We want to behave ourselves. We want to act appropriately, all of that. And it's better than ripping someone's head off. So, you know, you know, it's better at least I'm trying to kind of have an open rib cage and have my rib cage moving. But you know what? You know, remember I talked about that little crease line around what's called our sacroiliac joints, where interestingly, the one area that needs to be positioned in a certain way is a huge problem area for people. It's probably one of the, one of the number one dysfunctions that I see in my work. People have pain there, they have instability, they have weakness, and then that turns into sciatica, numbness, joint misfunction or malfunction, I should say, et cetera, et cetera. Back pain, blah, blah, blah. So this is all really good. I look good. <laughs> but this is offline. There's nothing going on there. So I'm going to fix it. Oh, did we have a, a comment? <laughs> That's very sweet. <laughs> Thank you, Louise. <laughs> so um, I'm going to fix it now. All right, so here I go, I'm fixing it. I'm doing it really slowly, though, so maybe you can't see anything really happening. Did you see much? No? Oh, it feels so much better. <laughs> what I did is I created that little bit of arch at that area right where the sacrum connects 
to the hip bones in the back, those little dimples. Yeah, those little dimples we have back there, those two dimples on either side of the back of your pelvis. And all I did was to indent them a bit. So now they're no longer sinking into the chair, <laughs> but they're now away from the chair. Now if I sink them and I don't do anything here, that's what happens. this is what happens, yeah? Hi. <laughs> now you can obviously tell this is probably not ideal. <laughs> and of course there's no way anything can move here. Nothing is moving at the sides, which is actually where you want to feel movement happening. Do you feel movement happening at the side of your ribs when you breathe? Yeah? Anything? Life? A little bit? Yeah? Okay. Do you feel anything happening there? A little bit? Okay, it's good. So what we want to feel, but again, you know, how sustainable is that? Or is it just because I asked you? <laughs> We're very suggestive suggestible. But if I do that little bit of positioning of my pelvis, immediately it frees up my diaphragm, my rib cage releases. And if I sustain that when I breathe, automatically there'll be movement here. My spine will align itself properly, my head will position itself properly, my rib cage will position properly. And the support muscles, the stabilizing muscles of the abdominals and back are now in operating. Now what's interesting, so I have now put my body in as about an ideal as it's ever going to be <laughs> based on whatever preconditioning things the body has. When I lift my arm, my core will fire. I'll lift it and it will fire. If I don't have it on, I will lift my arm. <laughs> they, nothing will be firing. <laughs> so we can play with this a little bit. I know that you don't necessarily have a lot of the knowledge of exactly where it is I want you to do this. But as you're sitting there on the chair, can you sort of feel right at the very lowest part of your back? That it's sort of sinking into either the hole or the chair. What I'd like you to do, and you can put your feet maybe flat on the ground, is I'd like you to start to try and move that part of your pelvis away from the chair. So you're going to sort of feel maybe your pelvis will rock forward and your rib cage will start to maybe let it roll up the chair a little bit. Is that happening? So that you'll come away from the chair, but it's almost like you'll create a little bit of an arch in the very lowest part of your back. Yeah? Is that kind of happening? Ish? Okay, it looks pretty good. Now try lifting your arm. Does anything happen in your lower belly? No. So you may not be in the right place. Now unfortunately we can't really make this a proper exercise class, but maybe offline I can help you in terms of how to position your pelvis. But what's interesting is what can allow or support the body ideally is the consciousness of the being because the being is the main the main thing yeah consciousness and the quality of that consciousness is determined by how I position myself how I identify myself that is my alignment as a being when that is correct, and when I'm seated on my throne <laughs> of the forehead, and I'm the observer seeing through the eyes, yeah, that alignment that we did earlier, we can actually get to it again. Why don't we close our eyes again and get on our seat? So right now, you get yourself up, you're behind the eyes, and it's like you're standing behind your seat. You're getting ready to sit in it. And then you're going to gently open your eyes, keeping your attention focused in that field of vision. Center the forehead. And you're sitting now on the throne. You're the observer seeing through the eyes. Animating the breath. And simply by positioning yourself here, the quality, the very quality of the energy 
You're always generating energy, but that quality starts to change. As you are now centered, comfortably seated on the throne, where you are powerful, where you are the master. And so that energy starts to become very light, very gentle, but very accurate, very efficient. There's clarity. And it starts to liberate. It has the power to liberate, to release, to help the body to release tensions, to allow you, even as you kind of focus on the body, and you allow that energy to start to, you know, actively you are assisting it, intentioning it to be what's driving the breath, what's supporting the bones. Things happen, doesn't matter. We know what that's about, and we know what we're about. And the sense of self it can give you is to get comfortable with that sense of self, to enjoy it, to appreciate it, and to desire it, to want to experience the self more and more like this, so I make the effort to position myself properly. And the more I do it, the more I'll do it. And sometimes I wasn't thinking about being on my throne, but I get pulled there. If I have a sort of, you know, looking out at what the person's wearing as they're crossing in front of the car or what's happening over there, and suddenly I realize I'm, we go out. Yeah, what we're experiencing can, pull, experiencing can pull us out of ourselves. And then something happens and we realize, oh, I wasn't on my throne because I feel reactivity. Or someone upsets me, yeah? But then let that be a shift signal. I'm not on my seat. Imagine that that was always the only issue you ever have. Not that this person says this or this happens or you're about to sneeze, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> bless you, but I'm just not on my seat. Kind of simplifies things, meaning I've forgotten myself, I got lost, <laughs> and I need to remember. Sometimes that's what we call this practice of Raj Yoga. It's a simple practice of forgetting and remembering. I forgot for a very, 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 very long time to the point where I didn't even, the possibility of remembering wasn't even a possibility. But then I was reminded, I was given this knowledge, I am a soul and I sit here like a tiny star radiating spiritual light, generating energy. I'm not physical, I'm not part of this body, I existed before this body and I will exist after it. And this truth and this positioning here is powerful. So alignment, awareness, life. Breath is simply an activity, an action. It's the first action for the body make that quality come from this and it will color others. If this quality, if the life, if the breath that I'm generating based on this position, positioning, what will that breath then create in terms of speaking, moving, the power that that breath is creating to perform physical actions. Just even how I will experience my body. I mean, we've all experienced pain in our body, yes? Maybe you haven't. I hope you haven't, but chances are something. 
I can, if I can get myself here, and that can be a challenge. Probably one of the biggest challenges is when we're settling and we're going through something in the body. Pain, discomfort, illness. It can make it difficult. And if my practice is to think, yeah, to think things, I don't know about you, but if there's sickness or whatever, or I'm really tired, it's like I don't even have, my mind isn't allowing me to even do what I want to do with it. <laughs> so that might not even be an option to generate the thoughts that can help me get to where I need to go. And why I'm saying that is I know for me personally, I can't always rely on thinking my way into this position. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm, definitely. And this is actually speaking to this power of the position, the power of concentration. Thank you for bringing that up because it was something I did want to mention. The power of concentration, we can often feel is, you know, the power to be able to concentrate. <laughs> yeah? Does it kind of sound like that? I like to think of it as the power that comes, very much to what you were saying, that comes when I become concentrated. Yeah? Did you feel that when you were concentrated, simply by the fact that you were holding this understanding of I am this point sitting here? And it focused, but it concentrated me and as I became concentrated, it created power. And it created a certain quality of power because of the kind of energy that I am. And so we lose that power. We have a different kind of power because we're often very fragmented or expanded and all over the place. Yeah, we can still have a kind of power, but it might not. we might not have control over it or it might not be particularly beneficial. It might be very harmful power. Yeah, we can have the power to have accidents and, you know, not be accurate. This is a very gentle, accurate, efficient, caring power. Peaceful power, very stable. And it comes from when I become concentrated. Not concentrated in the sense that I'm focusing on something, because most of the time in our day, we, you know, we have to move around, we have to do things, we can't just. And so imagine if that was your practice. Okay, I'm peaceful as long as I'm like this. Don't ask me to do anything, don't ask me to say anything, don't ask me to move. Otherwise, you know. It's not very functional. So that's clearly not the practice of Raj Yoga. But it's that I'm able to position myself here, use my awareness to sustain that position, that I'm the one seeing through my eyes. And I feel that that's what I'm doing. And then my eyes become a means for me to sustain that position. Because you know what one of the number one ways we lose ourselves is? through our eyes. Yeah, we see something and off we go. <laughs> so wouldn't it be better if our eyes could actually become the means for us to sustain our spiritual stage and alignment? Sure, but let's start with this one. <laughs> well, breathing is important because it's about integration. Yeah, as soon as I'm taking this energy and I'm being aware of the quality and the of the breath that it's generating when I'm positioned here, it's plugging my, me into my body in a very respectful, very loving, caring way, and very liberating way, and very empowering way. And so, that's I know also that if I have the thought of creating that quality of breath, it also supports me 
being in this position, they start to actually feed back each other. But to be the observer, I've actually done this with many people, just to position yourself as the one seeing through the eyes, with the attention here, even if they have no idea that they're the one sitting here, they just are putting their attention here, and this intention, I'm the one seeing through the eyes, changes the quality of how they move their body. They have more mastery, they have more accuracy, and they have the capacity to even troubleshoot and adjust and correct their body just by that positioning. <laughs> That's me. It's putting me back into the picture. It's being present, ultimately. I mean, this is the way to be present. Because, you know, one can be present, but what's say like the present, what's happening is really awful. Okay, I'm present to it, <laughs> and it's really awful. Now what? But it's about how and who am I present? In what way am I present? Is extremely important and can make all the difference. So I invite you in the time, because we will have to come to a close, I invite you, between now and next Friday, to just simply practice this. Remember that the soul is very subtle. It's a point. It's energy. It doesn't take up mass, doesn't take up space, has no weight. Point. Let my efforts be aligned with that. So as I position myself here with that gentleness, with that lightness, with that subtlety, but accurately here, observing through the eyes, and then from there, generating breath and action, thoughts, behavior. Yes, and I know we have something in the back. Well, I mean, you don't need it. <laughs> but sometimes we know things can help calm. It's a funny thing. I think all the music I will share with you in the beginning, they weren't, when they were practicing this way back in India at the beginning of this organization, there were no red lights. There were no music. There was nothing. We sort of create a very artificial container to help create that calmness, to help generate a feeling of the spiritual state that we want to get to with those things, to support. But no, they're not needed. But if they help initially, fine. You know, I do exercises with people that aren't necessarily going to be what they're going to use when they walk and move around. But it, it helps them get to a place where they can then do it without those things. So, yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm. So we have a question from live stream. Mm -hmm. The sacroiliac joint area, yeah, the back of the pelvis. Both. <laughs> Often they feed each other. And I will repeat the question. So the question was asking, why actually is there so much back pain? Why does it seem to be so prevalent, this issue with the uh, sacroiliac joints in the back of the pelvis? That area is actually an extremely important area for the body, where the, all the weight of the upper body is being transferred out to the legs. It's like a, a keystone area. The forces acting on that area are huge. <laughs> Yeah, in terms of this weight coming down and then weight coming up as we step and all of it kind of meeting there. And if it's not being properly supported and the muscles aren't engaging properly, there'll be compression. And often there's twisting, there's misalignment, there's all sorts of things. Our culture of sitting doesn't help because it gets very weak back there so that when we stand, there's nothing to hold and support that area. But also misalignment of the posture because alignment helps to keep that area properly active and supported. And of course, stress just tightens me up. And remember the rib opening? 
how that helps this area align properly. If this stress is tightening me up, and guess what? Number one is the screw, the stress screw. <laughs> yeah, then I tend to lose the proper connectivity there. So this will help with the stress, <laughs> which could help freeing and opening up the ribs, which could actually help then. But I still need a bit of information now about how and what is the exact positioning of the pelvis that's needed. Maybe we can look at that very briefly next time. But um, for now, we'll have to finish, come to a close, unless there was any other thoughts or questions. So thank you again. I'd like to finish with just another exercise, or not even so much exercise, but a re... Um, we can't drill this enough, so I'd like to do it again. This putting ourselves on the seat and having an experience of that powerful position. So just check in where you are now. Maybe you're already on that seat. But if you're not, even though you don't have to close your eyes, you don't have to do the whole little exercise, I kind of like to do it. It's kind of like going from off the seat to clearly on it, and that is helpful. But ultimately, you can just be there. You can just go there. And so once again, closing your eyes for a moment. Naturally, you're now inside, automatically, inside the body. but. Rather than the body feeling like a seat or throne, it can actually feel like a cage or a room that I'm in. And I can send my awareness around that room and explore and be aware of every part of it as my awareness of the body becomes a bit heightened with my eyes closed because my body is now my world. I'm inside of it. And now I'm going to bring my awareness up into my head, past my lips, my nose, my cheeks, to behind my eyes. And also, as I am behind the eyes, I'm aware of the center of the forehead, those almost like a triangle of three eyes, the two physical eyes and the third eye the seat of I, the soul. And so with that sense of almost that triangle, I gently open my eyes, maintaining my focus, my attention there. But now, I'm the one seated in the center of the forehead, seeing through the eyes, the observer. Naturally centered, properly positioned with the knowledge of who I am and in the position of where I sit relative to the body and just allowing myself to explore and experience the impact of that, the power of that positioning of that awareness. I am that tiny point of light like a tiny star, seeing through the eyes, shining that subtle spiritual light through the eyes. And that energy, the quality of it, allowing myself to notice the gentleness the stillness, the peace, the silence, the royalty. And then becoming aware of the movement of the ribs, the freedom, the expansiveness with the breath.
that gentle joy, contentment, of just simply being the truth of myself. And then giving myself the thought, the intention, to seek myself here as much as possible, to be in this truth of myself as often and as much as I can. True alignment, true awareness, powerful. Life. Breath. Om Shanti. Thank you. Good night. Until next week. Take care.